Hello welcome to Relation Tales. Today we're going to have some more stories from Reddit. But before we start, it would be so much appreciated if you would subscribe to my channel, like the video if you enjoy it, and now, without further ado, let's go. Here is my story. I should be at work, but instead I'm inexplicably calm, sitting at the kitchen table, drinking a cup of freshly brewed coffee. I needed this to calm myself down. I usually found this to be a very peaceful practice. I used to do this regularly when our kids were little. I would get up about an hour earlier than the rest of the household just to enjoy the quiet. I think it was kind of a hobby of mine. I am Evan, Evan Johnson, by the way. Happily married for 25 years, well, I was happily married a couple of hours ago. We have four children, the last of whom left home last year. My wife was depressed with empty nest syndrome. I think that's what she called it. So, I encouraged her to get a hobby. I think she did. An hour ago, I didn't know his name. His name was Stallion. At least that's what she kept calling him. Do it, Stallion. Come on, baby. I know you can do it. It was strange that the aroma of my favorite coffee permeating the house didn't interrupt them. Usually, when I brewed coffee, my wife Audrey would run downstairs before it was even ready. Anyway, Audrey was very busy, so that might explain why she hadn't smelled it yet. Tell me how much better I am than your spineless weakling husband. Oh my god, you're so much better. My old Smith & Wesson Model 59 lay loaded on the red oak kitchen table next to my mug. I pondered whether to put it on the safety and decided to put it on. I had to be careful. Well, it's just in case, but after all, her boyfriend is a cop. How would I know that? Because when I got home early, his uniform and gear belt were strewn across my living room floor, along with all of my wife's clothes. That's it, baby. Take me harder. Harder. I've never felt anything like this until you came along. And thank God you did. The sounds of the bed springs creaky and the banging of the headboard against the wall continuously penetrated my brain. I had a hard time focusing on what I was supposed to do. I wasn't sure how much time I had, but judging by the noise coming from what used to be my bedroom, which, by the way, I would never enter again, I had plenty of time. I knew it wasn't the first time they'd been together because, among other things, I heard, damn it, baby, we need to find a way to increase our time together to two or three times a week instead of every once in a while. This was coming from the mouth of my loving wife. At least, I think that's what she said. How did I end up here in the middle of this nightmare? It was really stupid. I went to work and forgot my briefcase. No, I actually left it in the garage because I put it in to get the cat out from under the hood of my car and forgot about the briefcase. Tabby was our second cat. One cold winter morning many years ago, I forgot to tap on the hood before starting the car, and that was the end of Clarence, our first cat. There's nothing like the sound a cat makes when it gets wrapped up in a fan belt spinning at about 1000 revolutions per minute, not to mention all that mech flying around. Clarence wasn't smart enough, and apparently, neither was I. You're never going to let that weakling you call your husband touch you again. No, he'll never touch me again. I swear, my briefcase wasn't really that important, so I was just going to leave it behind. But I had to visit a client who drove me straight to my house anyway. I turned onto my street and immediately saw a black and white police car parked out front. I felt like someone had stabbed me in the heart. I assumed something terrible had happened to my devoted wife. I drove my 8-year-old camera into the driveway, nearly hitting my wife's brand new silver Lexus LS sedan. Her plaster garden gnome wasn't so lucky. I didn't even close the door and ran into the house. That's how I ended up here, drinking coffee. Take me now, stud. Make me feel good. God, I've never felt anything so good. It was very unpleasant. And instead of coffee, I really wanted whiskey, but I figured I'd still need a clear head. I had to admit that their passionate screams were very disturbing, and seeing it was even worse. But I had to see it, if only to get the necessary video and audio. Honestly, seeing them tumbling around in my bed wasn't the most disturbing aspect. The most unpleasant part was the verbal humiliation my wife heaped upon me. God, you are so much better than Evan. Give it to me, baby. All of it. Apparently, this really spurred her lover on, because the whole house started shaking, along with the bed, and his swearing and grunting went up a few decibels. Let me tell you, it is a shock when your wife sleeps with her lover in your marital bed. And yes, they did it on my side. My wife was breathlessly riding him with horror and style, telling her lover how much it turned her on. That's when I ran to the bathroom, bent over the toilet, and threw up my breakfast. I was surprised they didn't hear or smell it either. I guess they were very focused on what they were doing. Part of me couldn't believe it all, even after I had seen and heard enough to convince the jury of what was going on. But my wife was 50 years old, and the jerk she was sleeping with couldn't have been more than 30, and he was really in good shape. My wife was hardly a match for him. Sure, I wasn't macho either, but couldn't the underscore at least go after someone else's wife who was in shape? I don't get it. It seemed to go on forever, but after about 90 minutes, it got very quiet. I guess they must have taken a break. Suddenly, I heard my wife ask, what is that smell? 
Did you make coffee? There was no response from her boyfriend. I just heard, oh my god from Audrey. And then a bunch of running around, the sound of closet doors opening and closing, dresser drawers, and laundry baskets. I assumed they were cleaning up evidence of their date. I made a mental note to get tested for sexually transmitted diseases immediately. I heard them coming down the stairs. They both appeared in the kitchen, naked, wrapped in sheets. They saw me at the same moment. Audrey drew in air sharply because I was there, and my underscore did the same. I'm not sure if his shock was at the sight of me or the Smith & Wesson Model 59. He furtively looked in the direction of his uniform and immediately became despondent. Not the air stud. What about your service weapon? Your boss took it with him when he left carrying Guy. He literally started to fade before my eyes. And then I saw his lips quiver in desperation. He fell to his knees, losing the sheet in the process, and began frantically rummaging through the pile on the floor. He took this too, I think he called it your throwing weapon. I'm guessing the thing that upset him the most was the fact that the serial number had been taken off of it, something like five to seven years for that. Former officer Stott Johnson's shoulders slumped dramatically at this revelation. Like I said, he's a caring guy. We had a pretty good station while you two lovebirds were minding your own business upstairs. He quickly looked out the window to the street. Yes, he also took the patrol car. Your boss said you were providing security at the construction site. He was going to take your uniform too, but he thought you might need it when you leave here. But where was I? Oh yeah. After Sergeant Marks got his video of you both and collected your weapon, he spotted my Smith and Wesson and asked me, Is that your weapon? Yes, licensed. Yes, you know how to shoot it. I do. You going to shoot any of them? You know we get angry if civilians shoot someone, even if they deserve it. One of the advantages of our job is that we can shoot people, and you can't. I promised Uncle Pat, I mean Sergeant Mark, that unless the underscore encore has a third weapon that we don't know about, nobody gets shot. Your boss said okay, and headed for the door with the words, Oh, do me a favor. Tell Officer Johnson not to come to the station. We'll call him when we want to talk to him. I've never seen a cop cry before. It's about time you picked up your weapon. You don't have a third gun, do you? He shook his head negatively. I knew there wasn't because we checked. I was just trying to emphasize my point. I wasn't actually aiming at any of them. I just kind of waved them off and went on with my story. Maybe you could call your wife for a ride home. Probably not. She was too upset about that video I emailed her of the two of you in my bedroom. It was hard to understand what she was saying. But it was something about her father, the chief of police. How could you do that to your kids? She told me about them. You seem to have a good family. Too bad. Despite the situation, I was really having fun right now. It was a bit like having a fish on a rod, and I was just playing with it a bit. I'd asked my wife to drive you, but her car's been impounded. What? Audrey's high-pitched squeal. The police impounded your car. Audrey, because there was a couple of ounces of unaccounted for marijuana in the front seat. Sergeant Mark said they usually just write a ticket if they do anything at all, but he felt they owed me something for all the trouble the police department caused me. Don't worry, he said. You can probably pick up the car in a few days after they've done all their forensics. Oh my god. Now she wasn't screaming anymore. It was more of a sad moan, kind of like a lonely little hound howling at the moon. Well, officer, I think it's time for you to put on your uniform and leave. So, he did. As soon as he left, my wife regained her speech. Please, Evan, I love you. It didn't mean anything at all. It was just a hobby or something like that. Oh man, I wish you told me that sooner. I was worried you loved him and were going to divorce me. Well, now I feel bad. I guess I really overreacted, didn't I? I mean, you love me and all. Of course I love you, Evan. Why would you doubt it? Well, aside from the whole infidelity thing, underscore underscore, your lover on my side of the bed, and you calling me a stupid idiot covered in crayon, there were other signs. Oh, honey, I never actually did that. It was just bedroom talk to get us horny. Wait, you said you overreacted, Evan. What did you do? She looked annoyed. Evan, what did you do? Up until now, she seemed to be in a state of shock. Now she was definitely nervous, paying close attention to me. Well, I'm sorry, but just when I thought you didn't love me anymore, I sent the video to our kids. I just wanted them to see who their new daddy would be. You might have to wait a little while before you call them. They seemed upset for some reason. I thought they'd be happy for you. Well, it shows you what I did. Oh my god, you didn't. I just nodded my head. I forgot to mention one more thing, but you probably already know that your lover's wife works for the same company as you. I think she mentioned that she works as an executive assistant to the CEO. Don't worry, I told her not to fire you because you'll still need your job, even if you get transferred to Little Rock. When I talked to my attorney, she said that since you make more money than I do, you will be paying me child support for a few years. She thinks it will be somewhere around $3,000 a month. I know most cheating husbands refuse to accept this, the macho kind, but that's not going to happen to me. I plan to take time off from work and go on a long fishing vacation to deal with my pain. 
As the song goes, Deep Sea Sorlita, fishing in the Gulf of Mexico. I'm not sure why the lawyer wanted a picture of you. She said it was to give it to your father. Maybe it was so she could give it to all the officers in case they wanted to start any harassment or maybe it was to see if any more of them wanted to date you. But at any rate, I gave her a picture. I also sent a copy of the video to your mom and dad and all your co-workers. How could you be so cruel to me, Evan? Oh, honey, I wasn't cruel. I just wanted everyone to know who your new beau is. All your friends on Facebook seemed happy for you. At this point, Audrey was almost unresponsive. She just sat on the floor in her sheet, sobbing, shaking her head, and muttering, This can't happen to me. Okay, sweetie, you need to get dressed and pack your bag. Your parents should be here soon to pick you up. I nudged her in the direction of the stairs to get dressed. Pick me up. Well, of course, you'll need a place to sleep. They told me you could stay with them for a while. The house will have to be sold as part of the divorce. I said to her afterward, Divorce. You seem to have a few questions, dear. That surprises me. What did you think was going to happen when I found out? Well, I, uh, I really, uh, you didn't think you'd get caught. Are we going to continue this pointless conversation? It was quiet upstairs for a few minutes. She didn't make a sound except for the occasional wheezing and sobbing. Why do cheaters always cry when they get caught? It's the most horrible thing. If being caught is so unpleasant, then, for God's sake, don't cheat. About ten minutes later, she came downstairs, dressed but without her suitcase. Evan, hun, we really just. Then I heard her parents' car pull up in front of our house. Goodbye, Audrey. As always, gentlemanly, I held the door. That's the story. If you liked it, please support us with a like as well as subscribe to our channel. Write in the comments what you think about the story. Thank you for being here with us.